I don't remember much about my childhood, like most people. Those memories are always vague, and eventually you realize whatever you remember is probably just a reconstructed memory. You don't have much choice in the matter, and are usually convinced that your memory will never fail you. The first memory I have was when I was five. I'm not sure if it's real or not, but that's when I think I met Michael. I never had any friends, so I was glad when I met him. He called me jacked, and I liked it. As I'm certain I am if I remember our first encounter, there is no doubt the strong bond we immediately formed. I won't bore you with the details of what we did every day for the past few years, but I will outline some of the things we did together to assure even the most skeptical among the readers of our friendship. Michael, being a slightly effeminate child, didn't have many friends at school either. He was bullied, and the highlight of his day was coming home and sharing a cup of tea with me, all the while telling me of his woes and lessening his burden. The tea, unlike my words of consolation, was make-believe. Another one of his favorite activities was cutting my hair. He would style it in all sorts of ways, and I enjoyed each one of them. Fortunately for him, my hair grew inexplicably fast, and he often got a chance to restyle it. There was one thing that constantly strained our relationship, though. Don't get me wrong, Michael and I had absolutely no hard feelings towards each other. But it was his parents. I don't think they approved of me, and I couldn't tell you why, even if I tried. It wasn't just disapproval. I think they began to hate me. The longer our friendship lasted, the worse it got. It pains me to even think about it, so I won't dwell on this for long. As quickly as our relationship had initially flourished, it began to diminish after two years. Michael grew to be a stocky football player, and I remained exactly the same as before, scrawny and completely incapable of competing athletically. He made new friends and started to ignore me. This hurt me a lot, especially since I was there for him in his time of need. His abandoning me was the last thing I expected, and it hit me hard. I felt like I had no one left in the world. As I sit in the corner of the room and write this, I could see Michael and his friends watching TV. Sometimes it seems like he notices me and looks my way, but I know better. I am now resigned to my fate. He created me, but he forgot to destroy me.